I'm so pleased to welcome to the show Victoria Udo. Her book is called The God I Know. And what she talks about in this book uh, takes you from I from A to Z. It, it really does. And so we are very pleased to welcome her to the show. Victoria, let's start with this here on Author's Corner. Tell me about your story. How did you get here? Tell me about um, your upbringing and how you arrived to the States and all that good stuff. Oh, thank you, Kate, for having me on your show. I'm very excited. I came, I was born in the southeastern uh, corner of Nigeria by the banks of the Atlantic Ocean, uh, precisely in Dia, near Akets, where my father worked as a nurse in the Lutheran Hospital, and my mother worked as a teacher in one of the primary schools. They're talking about the fifties. Wow. And so you come so so all that unfolds and now it leads us to this book. The again, The God I Know, Amazing Supernatural Encounters with Jesus. What made you write the book? And there were so many things that had happened to us and they were supernatural. I was scared that they may be lost if I don't talk about it. You know, though at times I felt intimidated, oh, you came from uh, Nigeria, one corner there in the southeast in Akwaibom State, what do you think? But I had to talk about it because I know it would bless people. It would bless the people who pray. It would bless the people who don't know there is a God and they are looking. It will bless the people who get discouraged by the problems of life. I knew that this book will be a blessing. So I had to write. And what was it like when you started writing? Was it, did it just pour out of you? Yes, it did. Um, I, I had to listen to some uh, experts talk and I would wake up early in the morning and just sit in my corner. Like my daughter says, my mother was always going to the corner and type it, type it gently because I'm not very proficient at typing, but I, I had to do it myself because it was not the kind of thing you tell people to do for you. Yeah, and you in this book you have what we call your war stories or what you call your war stories. Tell us about that. Yes. I there is there are chapters that talk about what happened the biafran nigerian war i was a, a little girl i was a teenager in school and it was a very difficult time it, it's I, I i i now say that i know that war is bad and that people should do everything to avoid it but god was very uh, merciful there were mushrooms you never hear this kind of story mushrooms in the whole area and so girls would go in and get mushrooms and we bring to our mothers to cook for us and that was the main source of protein how god did it that was so providential and i thank him for it but the people died our classmates died I was in 12th grade, or was it 10th grade, when the principal said, everybody go home. I was in a boarding school, and that was Lutheran High School, Obodidum. We were told to go home, and we thought it would be for a day or two, but it lasted for months. It was bad. War is a bad, and I, I remember the, the soldiers uh, at me meeting them, I was weeding in a farm where we had run to hide. And suddenly I heard this sound and it looked like the forest was moving. And there soldiers were coming at a direction. And then some people spoke and said, run. But while you were running, keep saying, welcome soldiers. Thank you for coming to liberate us. 
it was a terrible experience. Wow. You know, and at one point you talk about you were shot in the jungle farm. Wow. What what happened? Yes. Um I I went to the farm by then I was uh, married in the uh, the com my husband we lived there we went I I went with my uh, helpers and I did not know that there was a family that was at war with a certain woman who drove my kind of car a station wagon and I had just changed the color of the car from white to green exactly her color and then the soldiers were paid they were there aiming i saw people aiming guns like three of them and i said are you looking for some animal not knowing that they were about to shoot me and god helped me with a bible verse and i said by my god i run through a troop by my god i leap over a wall and i got into the car with the girls and we drove. That's how, but they still shot. I, I have the marks because I hit my mouth on the steering wheel, but God delivered me. Wow, what a, what a, uh, an amazing story. And then as you mentioned the, the move, you talked about your family, what coming from where you came from and what you had to deal with with the war and all the things that were wonderful, but all the things that were tough, what was it like flying in an airplane. That was amazing because I had an inquisitive mind growing up. I had always asked my dad, you know, will I enter those things that are flying up there? And he said, if you work hard, if you work hard and you are determined, you will fly. And now I have flown back and forth Africa over 30 times, going to help uh, poor children in schools and going to teach teachers. It's been amazing. I flew in an aeroplane. (laughs) I love that. And then you have a crazy story about the snake. I want to hear about your snake story that's in the book. Oh, wow. Well, that one, my husband and I were going to go out for an evening. And before he wore his shoe, he kicked it. And he never does that. When he kicked, behold, a snake ran out of the shoe and that did not bite him. So that to me was a miracle. That is a miracle. And again, we're speaking with Victoria Udo, the book, The God I Know, Amazing Supernatural Encounters with Jesus. Tell us about, tell us about that part. Um, when you, when you failed and you were about to be sent out to the university, but you say God intervened and it was a miracle. Yes. You know, sexual harassment professors who want to uh, use girls anyhow, but I had been saved and I kept my head high up. And I did not know after the exams that I was failed, I went down to Lagos from Ife. I went to go look for a vacation job, but sitting about 10 a.m. in the morning, so miraculous. I had a vision that someone said you have been failed go back to the university and i the lord have gone before you and you will prevail that was awesome i i i i I turned around and i did not see anybody i didn't tell anybody i just hung my purse in my shoulder and went and took a taxi to ife when i went all the directions that I was given. I was told you will meet Dr. Ola and he will take you to Dr. Ogu. And I met Dr. Ola standing at the lintel of the chemistry department. It was awesome. While they were saying, oh, sorry, we're so sorry for what has happened to you. I knew in my heart that God will do something. And finally, before the end of that day, As I went through with the directions I was given, three professors, Professor Reinhardt and two others, Professor Edwards of Utah, who was then our head of department, they stood in the corridor and they changed my result. And that's why I could continue the next year and graduate 
with my degree in chemistry and mathematics. And then finally, we want to make sure we mention this because I think this is wonderful. You and I talked about this off the air. LifeBridgesInc.com. What an amazing thing you are doing to to really show people um, what there is in a different part of the world and vice versa. Tell everyone about that. Um, I have a, a nonprofit uh, organization, LifeBridgesInc.com. And we use it as a platform with my husband to um, give to poor children. We sponsor, we we sponsor the children back in Nigeria. I have also been to Botswana. We sponsor the children and encourage them, give uh, school supplies, we give books and stationery. And then we give food. It's a, a real wonderful opportunity. And uh, men, some friends, friends of Life Bridges, people who come alongside us and donate. Wonderful. Victoria Udo, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you, Kate, for having me. I hope many people will come alongside us and then they will yield their lives to Jesus. Thank you. 